Let's clear up some common and widely held myths about blood sugars that occur after meals, after you eat, or what we call postprandial blood glucosis. Well, first of all, what happens when you eat food? What happens to blood sugar after you eat a meal? Well, if you have carbohydrates in the meal, blood sugar will go up. If there are no carbohydrates or only a small quantity of carbohydrates, blood sugar won't go up as much. And that blood sugar excursion, that rise and then fall, is typically about a 90 minute to 120 minute long process. Let's dispel some common myths about postprandial or after meal blood sugars. Myth number one, if you wanna know what your blood sugar is after a meal, check it two hours after the meal. That's flat wrong. That's what my colleagues tell their patients, but what they're trying to do is to assess whether the insulin dose or other diabetes drugs are sufficient to keep blood sugar under reasonable control. This has nothing to do with capturing the peak blood sugar, but only if there's a return to baseline, okay? So this is useless for our purposes. It's only useful in the setting of managing diabetes medication. So forget that rule. Another common myth an after-meal blood sugar of up to 200 is fine. You'll hear my colleagues say that a lot. That's completely untrue. An after-meal blood sugar of say 160, 180, 190 is extremely destructive. It causes weight gain. It contributes rapidly to insulin resistance. That's the process that leads to type 2 diabetes. It leads to visceral fat accumulation, which is highly inflammatory and raises risk for con conditions like dementia and cancer and heart disease. One of the things that I advocate is you check a blood sugar at 30 to 60 minutes after the start of the meal to capture the peak blood sugar. Not the return of blood sugar to baseline, but the peak blood sugar. And you'll see another video I've made called the no change rule with blood sugars. And what we aim for is no change in blood sugar. If you start at 100, you want it to end up at about 100 at 30 to 60 minutes after the start of that meal. If you start high, let's say 120, you want it no higher than 120. What happens when you engage that no change rule in blood sugar from baseline before you eat to 30 to 60 minutes after the start of the meal. If you follow no change, you lose weight much faster. You can become a non-type 2 diabetic much more quickly. So it's a very, very effective rule. If there is a rise in blood sugar, let's say 100 to 140, look back at your meal, pinpoint the food that caused it, it would be a carbohydrate, either cut it out or reduce the portion size and then test it again and aim for a note for no change. That is extremely powerful little rule to follow. <clears throat> Another common myth about uh, postprandial blood sugars is that low glycemic index foods are better for you than high glycemic index foods. Well, there's a little bit of truth in that. The problem with that is that low glycemic index foods raise blood sugar to a high level. High glycemic index foods raise it even higher. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with the concept of glycemic index. The cutoff values for what they call low, medium, high are deeply flawed. If you're going to use glycemic index, what you aim for is either zero glycemic index foods, foods that don't raise blood sugar at all, or have single digit glycemic indexes like walnuts or avocado that barely cause blood sugar to budge at all. The idea of low glycemic index is deeply flawed because it rate, those foods raise blood sugar very, to have very high levels. Not as high as high glycemic index foods, but still quite high. Another myth, eating carbohydrates is okay, but mix it with fiber, protein, and fat so your blood sugar doesn't go up. Well, that's not entirely true. So let's say you ate a pure carbohydrate. Let's say oatmeal, which is mostly carbohydrate. And let's say your blood sugar goes from 90 to 160, which would be very common with a one cup serving with no added sugar. This time you have oatmeal, but you add some more proteins and fats to it. Blood sugar goes from 90, maybe to 150. Not as high, but still terrible. So don't fall for that myth either that you hear from a lot of dietitians combining foods to reduce blood sugar rises. So managing blood sugar after meals is an extremely powerful tool. And you can follow my no change rule that I discussed separately in another video. Uh, you can find that video on YouTube, on my Wheat Belly blog, and my Undoctored blog. But that is an exceptionally powerful tool. But know that all the myths you hear about blood sugars after meals cause a lot of confusion and impair a lot of people's health if they don't get this right. So understand what happens with blood sugar, allow no change, and you have an enormously effective tool for health.